And he is currently bis the business development manager, Green Philippines, the business development manager of Euron Philippines, and the business development manager of American Technologies Incorporated Philippines. So I would like to welcome Mr. Kevin Christopher Cole. invite everyone to try out their eggs first before we start uh, doing our talk because I don't want everyone to be tired number one uh, mention <laughs> heavy yung, yung lecture ni coach Joseph but it's actually quite similar to what I'm uh, I will be talking about okay. <laughs> you, you guys notice a difference between my face now and my face then yeah. this was me at 185 pounds huh? wow. I am now at 160 pounds for HR uh, when I graduated last, I only graduated last year in UP. When I graduated, I was a 26% body fat percentage. Now I'm at 16. So I lost 10% in my overall body fat percentage. Very interesting. So why did I start greens, number one? First of all, I wanted to lose weight. For someone as young as me, the ball game right now is about losing weight, uh, making yourself presentable to everyone in the market. So that you would, uh, you would achieve more things in life, basically. But what I realize is not just about that. Uh, Grains is not just for vanity. It's here to change your lifestyle, to make you healthier as a person. Okay? So I'll start with my presentation. Thank you very much for listening. So I may get a bit um, technical, as with, uh, as with the Coach Joseph's presentation. So please bear with me. So I'll do my slide presentation per slide, so you can interrupt me if you have any questions. Because what I noticed, I've been doing this presentation for over a hundred times. And the problem with this presentation is it gets technical. So everyone loses interest after probably the fifth slide. So I want everyone to be uh, informal, asking questions when you can. Um, so, so we can uh, address the, the situation in every slide. Address the, the questions in every slide. So number one, rice. Brown rice, black rice, forbidden rice, white rice, doesn't matter what rice you eat. It's conser uh, consumed by four billion people worldwide. Majority is in China, okay? But uh, especially in Southeast Asia, and especially with our OFWs. So even in the States, we've been influencing um, Western people to eat that, uh, rice as well, to incorporate rice in their diet as well. But if you think about it, uh, I'll be talking about later in terms of nutritional content with white rice versus other sources of carbs. You'll notice that white rice is barely any nutrition or minerals at all aside from the carbohydrate content. Okay. So number one, let's look at the anatomy of rice. Can everyone see the picture? So you can see the hull, uh, you can see the embryo, and you can see the white stuff. The white stuff is what we call the endosperm, which is um, if you're familiar with, with plants, they store their energy in the endosperm. So what we're actually eating is the starch reserve, the energy reserve of the, the, the rice plant. Okay. So what differentiates brown rice, black rice from white rice? So can, I, can anyone answer me? Difference between white rice, brown rice, black rice? Processing. Processing, yes. But what do we think about that? Because the husk, it's actually wrong. We're taking out the husk with white rice and brown rice. But we're taking out something else. So it's actually written there. Can anyone see it? Yes, correct. That's the bran layers. So with brown rice and black rice, they retain the bran layers, which is rich in vitamins. And uh, for white rice, we take out the bran because it spoils easily. So before, in the 1980s, 1970s, they haven't perfected the production method for brown rice. So now, we have availability of brown rice, but before, when they started selling it, it's very okay, So that's why you can't store it for a long time. Because it's very um, rich in volatile compounds, volatile vitamins that are easily broken down, especially with sunlight. So now, uh, everyone's familiar, white rice is basically rice without the brand layer. So what does it mean? It means a lot of things. So let's talk about the two basic forms of starch. 
coach was talking about energy sources and energy systems. So now we're not focusing on protein, we're not focusing on fat, we're just focusing on starch and carbohydrates. Okay? So to your left, you're seeing what we call amylose. To your right, that's what we call amylopectin. So these are very, very different starches. Okay? One is soluble at above 100 degrees Celsius, or at, at around 100 degrees Celsius. The other one is soluble at around 70 to 90 degrees Celsius. Anyone familiar with the word, uh, word uh, soluble? So can someone describe to me what soluble means? Solubility. Easily dissolved. Easily dissolved, meaning natutunaw sa tubig. Tama? So that's an interesting thing. At 70 to 90 degrees Celsius of water, amylopectin is dissolved. So with uh, any, uh, any starch source that you cook, not just rice, it's the same. You have amylose and amylopectin. It just depends on the ratio uh, of amylose to amylopectin. Okay? So amylopectin is what we call rapidly digestible starch. And amylose is what we call slowly digestible starch. So Coach was showing us an, uh, a graph that you right? You remember the graph wherein one is stable, the glycemic index, the glycemic blood sugar, more. Uh, blood glucose and insulin level is quite stable. That's the result of amylose. If you're eating slowly digestible starch, you're actually uh, creating that graph in your blood glucose level. When we eat amylopectin or, for example, high GI food, it's not just amylopectin, that's high GI. Yeah? Talking about white sugar, fructose, that's all high GI. So these things actually spike your blood sugar. So any questions with this slide? So everyone's familiar with uh, amylose and amylopectin now? Please interrupt me if you have any questions so that we can hear it out. Okay. So the red thing is called the alpha 1 to 6 bond. That's basically the, the, the bond that makes it easy for amylopectin to break down. Even in, uh, well basically this is just a molecular structure. So that red um, line is what makes it easier for it to break down. And like if you look at the amylose, the structure is very balanced. It's very hard to break down. So it's quite a, uh, uh, the terminology is quite advanced, but we can call it slowly digestible starch from now on, and rapidly digestible starch, so it's much simpler, okay? So two things that we're looking at usually, calories and glycemic load. Um, calories, you're talking about weight loss. Everyone familiar with, with the third calories, right? So actually, just some trivia, calories with a small C is actually the basic unit. Calories with a, with a big C is kilocalories. So what we're actually counting is kilocalories, not calories. Pag sinabi mong calories, uh, iba iba yung nakasulat eh. Iba kilojoules, iba kcal, iba small calories. So you have to be very nitpicky when you're looking at the nutritional um, information sheet regarding different products that you eat. Okay? So the definition officially of calories is the approximate amount to raise one gram of water uh, based on density being one gram uh, by one degree Celsius at one atmospheric pressure, okay? So why do we define it that way? It's because it's energy that we use uh, to increase the temperature of water, which is what happens in our bodies, okay? So it's a measurement of energy, it's the same as kilojoules. So sometimes you will see um, 700 plus, you might even some nutritional value, but it's actually kilojoules, so don't be surprised when you convert it, it's actually smaller in calories. So sometimes you have to be careful. Sometimes someone you'll see that it's a uh, kilocalories, pero baba siya pero convert kilojoules matas naman siya, so vice versa. So um, one gram of fat and one gram of protein is actually four kilocalories. We call it calories from now on. One gram of fat is nine. One gram of alcohol is seven. Seven, right? Uh, so <coughs> these are all standard. When it gets inside your body, uh, these are all standard already. No matter what kind of part you eat, what kind of fat you eat, it's all, all going to be the same in terms of numbers. But uh, it gets more complicated than that. It's not as simple as this. So for basic weight loss, we can look at calories. Basically, in and out, if you eat more calories than you consume, you gain weight. Vice versa, uh, when you burn more calories than what you consume, you lose weight. But the thing is, grains wasn't just invented for weight loss. It was actually invented for diabetics. So there's a more important thing that we have to look at, which is glycemic load, which is a derivative of the glycemic index that Coach was talking about. So glycemic indices, they're actually given to us by 
the World Health Organization and certain um, organizations that give you uh, the rating based on glucose, glucose being at 100. Okay? So glycemic load is just a derivative, meaning you multiply that by the amount of carbohydrates inside that food that you're eating, and that's what you get as your glycemic load. So sometimes it's not very uncommon that uh, sometimes you'll see uh, mababa yung glycemic index, pero kinain mo mataas yung glycemic load. Bakit? Kasi mas maraming carbohydrates. Take, take watermelon, for example. You know, it's mostly actually water. So sa glycemic index niya mataas, but based compared to 100 grams of eating that uh, rice versus 100 grams of eating that watermelon, mostly water yung kinain mo. So in terms of actual computation, you have to compute now whether or not this one has a higher GL or a higher GI. So it's more accurate to actually track your GL if you're diabetic, not just the GI of your eating. Again, these uh, numbers are given in GI, but the amount you eat is actually what raises your blood sugar. So it also depends on the volume of what you're eating, which is what this GL uh, is for. So again, the computation is GI. For example, white rice, let's say, short grain rice, uh, sushi rice, you're familiar with California rice? Uh, 80, I think, is the average GI for that. But for 100 grams of rice, it's not purely carbohydrates. Let's say 70% or 80% of that is carbohydrates, so that's 80 grams. You multiply that with the GI, then you get the GL. Okay. So it's more complicated than calories, glycemic index. You have to look at the whole picture, especially if you're diabetic. That's why we have doctors. That's why we have nutritionists. That's why we have fitness trainers like coach. So they can inform you about what uh, fitness is all about and how complicated it is, but make it easier for you and give you interest so that you can understand better. So grades is not just about selling the product, but also to raise awareness. Okay? We're not saying, as Coach mentioned earlier, it's not a panacea, it's not a bullet, it's not a magic bullet, it's not a cure for all. We're only um, solving your problem right now, not even solving, we're just helping your problem right now with carbohydrates. But if you're looking at what you're eating, uric acid, fat, um, protein. Maraming ng story eh, yung diet. So we're just tackling one thing at a time. Okay? So we don't want to get the consumers uh, who are buying grains to get the wrong image. If I buy grains, do I lose weight? Short answer, yes. Long answer, you need to do this and that for you to lose weight. Same with um, Huron, for example. As a juicer, some people are prone to abuse it. Some people will say, ah, inom ako ng inom ng orange juice, wala namang added sugar, it's actually healthy. But if you're diabetic, it's actually bad for you if you drink too much. So, the, the situation is very complex. It's just a matter of getting this information that we have right now to the consumers. Because the consumers right now are having this problem that they can abuse because just because they, they see it as healthy in TV or in the commercial, they think it's already healthy. And that's very problematic. So we want to tackle these issues. Okay? So for example, let's look at uh, these things you can get from Google, actually. Um, basic nutritional facts. White rice for one cup, uh, given 186 grams, the glycemic load is actually 30. It's not glycemic index that we're talking about. Calories, you can see, it's around 242. Calories from fat is very low. Um, is it talking the whole time? Because we have to run away. No, yeah. I'm going to ask for the bosses. Hello, I'm going to pull it up. Okay, it's good. It's working. All right. So, total carbohydrates is 53 grams, okay? No, wala. So, if you look at vitamins, vitamin A, vitamin C, calcium, iron, it has 15% of the recommended, recommended dietary intake for iron. So that's, got, that's a good thing. But iron, you can get so much from meats. So again, bawal din tayo sumobra, bawal din tayo magulang. Okay. Protein, you get a little bit for uh, one serving. Uh, it gets better with brown rice because you have brand layers for that. But in terms of vitamins, you can see practically halos wala. Unless maybe fried rice is what you're eating. Or maybe a derivative of a rice dish is what you're eating. But in terms of white rice alone, you can see fullness factor rating is 2.1. It means it's not So that's why we're probably eating rice. It's cheap. It's uh, It gives us instant energy, which is uh, coming from carbohydrates. So it's 92% carbs, 7% protein, 1% fat. And the nutritional rating is 2.6. Then if you remember this, let's compare it to 
white bread. So, isa pang problema natin ngayon, just like what you're eating probably for merienda, if you notice, turon, uh, noodles, <laughs> rice, mostly carbs. Actually, sinadya ko yan para, para mag-guilty kayo. So, hindi lang namin kayo tinatakot para bumili kayo ng brand. So, it's not just about that. We're, we're actually showing you the real facts of the story, the, 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 the realistic story behind carbohydrates. Kahit nasa EDSA siyang tayo, it's a five-star. Five-star ba doon? Yeah. Five-star hotel. They're serving you carbs for merienda. And we're saying people who have three meals a day, even four meals a day, mostly carbs ang kinakain nyo, just as what you saw. So the thing is, it's not really just fat and protein that we should worry about, but also carbohydrates. Everything we should be uh, worrying about and everything should be in balance. So if you look at white bread, it actually has lower uh, percentage of carbs and higher protein, uh, higher protein content. Why is that? White bread has gluten. Eh, maraming yun, pauso, ayaw ng gluten. But if you think about it, gluten is an entirely different story. Some people are sensitive to it, some people are not. Yung iba, nakikiride lang. Yung iba, allergic talaga sa gluten. Karamihan, nakikiride lang. And the, the, the funny thing is, if you look at our Facebook page, ang common question, um, Sir, tinatanggal ba nila yung gluten sa white rice? Walang gluten yung white rice. Eh. So, that's a thing. Gluten is glue coming from word glue, uh, it comprises co co of glutenin and gliadin, which is when it mixes, it turns into this network where you can uh, uh, create a network chain of proteins that you can get uh, air stuck inside. Kaya pag tingnan mo yung bread close up, parang siyang network. Then may butas-butas sa gitna kasi ito nasa stuck yung air, yung CO2 coming from the yeast. So that's what holds the structure, the gluten. So pag kumain ka ng gluten-free bread or gluten-free cake, wala siyang structure. You get that structure from other proteins like eggs, the coagulation of proteins from eggs. Okay. So in terms of fullness factor, what's the problem with um, white bread? 1.8 lang siya compared to the 2.1. Hindi siya nakapusog as much as white rice. But the nutritional rating is actually almost the same, 2.6. But the glycemic load is a lot lower for one slice. So if you convert it, let's say multiply it by four slices of white bread, you get 32 yung glycemic loads. It's almost like one cup of rice. Pero mas mataas pa rin ng content. Then, you talk about one half cup of potatoes, which is roughly 78 grams. So yung patatas natin kasi maligit eh. Dito sa Pilipinas. So you're talking about um, two uh, medium-sized Philippine potatoes. The glycemic load is uh, 31, which is similar to one cup of rice. But the fullness factor is higher. Protein is a bit higher. Nutritional rating is a bit higher. So again, there are many sources of starch, many sources, many kinds of carbohydrates, and they all have different nutrition ratings. Some have uh, better uh, dietary fiber content, some have uh, higher sugar content, some have lower protein content. Ito, medyo mabato, one gram lang. But look, what did you notice? So far, no? vitamin A, vitamin C, very low. Meron quantity of potatoes, but it's very low. Almost um, uh, almost ignorable. Of course, it makes a small impact, but the problem is you can get this uh, nutrition from other sources, vegetables. So, ako, I value vegetables. So, I push vegetables. Kung, kung may client ako lumapit sa akin, kaya ko mag-survive ng gulay, go for it. Pero pati mo kaya, pili ka ng rice cooker. Okay. So, what does it mean? Glycemic load of one teaspoon of sugar is actually three. So we're not counting calories, we're counting the glycemic load. If we count the glycemic load and you multiply it by 10 teaspoons, you get 30. So eating one cup of rice on 186 grams, just imagine, you're eating around the glycemic load worth for 10 teaspoons of sugar. I'm not saying they're the same in calorie content, but in terms of raising your blood sugar level, they're the same. So what's the problem with that? If you're non-diabetic, wala kang pakialam dyan. You're probably healthy. If you're diabetic, that's very problematic for you. That's why diabetics mostly avoid rice entirely or switch to brown rice because it's a low, it has a lower GL. But again, is it enough that you lower the GL just by eating brown rice? Again, you don't take out the starch in brown rice when you cook it. It's a safe. Okay. Bacon, for example, doesn't have carbs in mind. What's the problem with that? Everyone's saying, 
Ah, uh, dami pong problema ng carbs, inom ka carbs, protein, and fat pala ako. What's the problem with this? Look at the cholesterol content. 9 mg, that's 3%. For one uh, serving of 7 grams. Ang taas ng cholesterol. <coughs> Nutritional rating, a lot lower even than rice. Fullness factor, hindi pa na ako gusto. 68% fats, very dangerous. If you're already obese and then you start a no-carb diet, what's gonna happen? Tataas yung fat mo naman. Well, some people, pinakausun na yung ketogenic diet. But let's face it, you're eating good fats now. How do you keep it sustainable? Personally, I've tried ketogenic diet. I did it for two cycles, 14 days, 14 days. I lost around 8 pounds just by experimenting. 7 to 8 pounds. After one month, I gained it back. Why is that? Because you go back to carbs again. And your body readapts to your new diet. So the dieting plan is very complicated. Um, nutrition is very complicated. So, you saw the same chart with Coach, um, Coach's presentation, high GI foods versus low GI foods, what they, what they do. So, is ev uh, everyone's familiar with the two kinds of starches. I'm in the pectin, switch. which one? You guys remember? Oh, uh, see, this is what happens. I've done this talk over 100 times, no one remembers. That's why it's very easy for you to call it rapidly digestible starch or slowly digestible starch. Which is, in turn, you see the on the coach, good or bad starch, or bad sugar, or good, good carbs or bad carbs. It's not as simple as that. It's not necessarily good, it's not necessarily bad. But for simplicity's sake, because we don't that, we just call it good and bad. Okay. So for good carbs, slowly digestible carbs, which is amylose, or foods high in amylose, we call them low glycemic index. For the totally opposite, the ones with high rapidly digestible starch, high amylopectin content, we call them high glycemic index foods. What's the problem with that? Even if you're diabetic or not, it will do this. But it's just um, dramatized with diabetics. With diabetics, if you put it in metformin, for example, or uh, insulin, if uh, you're type 1, um, you need to stabilize your blood glucose level to the same way the chart in number one works. But how do you do that? You need medicine for that. But what grains does is to remove that excess carbohydrates and excess amylopectin. So from a high glycemic index rice, it becomes a low glycemic index rice. So we'll show you that later on. So what are the problems with high GI foods? Uh, can everyone understand the chart? It just shows the curves, the, the curves, but what does it mean? When your blood glucose level in your body, imagine there's so much blood, in, uh, there's so much sugar in your blood. It goes up, what does your body naturally do? Produces more insulin. Just so that it can keep up with the blood glucose level. So keep on up to the peak, they are the same level. But for high GI foods, mas mataas. Kasi nga, it raises your blood sugar more, so, mas mataas yung kailangan, mas marami yung kailangan yung produce the insulin. Then, when you have so high of an insulin level in your system, and naubusan ka bigla ng carbs, what happens? Your blood glucose level drops. As compared to a low GI food, wherein your insulin is not as triggered, it goes back normally. So, what we're avoiding is not just the spike, but also the stability of your blood glucose level. Especially for diabetics, this is important. So you can see um, we have two peaks, which is the, low, the lower peak, or the higher peak, which is uh, hyperinsulinemia or um, uh, hyperglycemia. And when you crash, it's called hypoglycemia. Again, there's a four, these are very complicated terms. I'll make it simpler for you. Sugar rush, uh, sugar rush, sugar crash. Right? So must must simple as that. So insulin, what is insulin? I'm sure people here are familiar with the term insulin. So I'll just give a brief description. It's a hormone released by the pancreas. <coughs> Every, everybody knows where the pancreas is in uh, Europe. Is anybody or what pancreas does? Somewhere. Uh, it's basically the key to letting your cells absorb glucose from the bloodstream. Okay. Too much, as I said, can cause um, the sugar crash, and too little can cause the sugar rush. Okay. So, um, to make it simpler for you, I'll give you an analogy. Kumain ka ng three cups of rice galing sa buffet on a Sunday. 
Uh, what happens if, if you're sleepy? No? Why is that? It's because of this. So sim simply put, that's what happens when you have too much um, um, uh, blood glucose, uh, too much insulin in your system. Uh, wherein you get super hyper, have a kumakaisha, kahit ka na kahit ka, kasi gising yung utak ko. Suddenly, I'm going to so what we notice with greens, when you eat and you switch to greens, you actually remove this entirely. Of course, there's going to be around the one month uh, adoption period. You need to adapt your body into this new, um, it's not really a diet, but new system. Um, your, your carbs will be a lot lower. So at the start, you won't really notice the effects. But again, it's the same with everything, even with diet, even with exercise, it takes time. Ako, when I lost the 30 pounds, it took me six months to lose it. With regular exercise, proper dieting, and no cheating. So the thing is, people cannot expect an instantaneous result when it comes to that. But here's the catch. How do you get an instantaneous result with green? Okay. If you bring an AccuCheck, for example, everyone's familiar with AccuCheck, blood testing, blood glucose testing strips. One touch. Yung tiyo and you put it there. What do you call it, sorry? One touch. One touch, yeah. You can call it one touch or after check is the brand. 15 minutes after eating this, you can actually compare it from your previous um, results coming from regular rice. You'll see a dramatic reduction. We've seen around 40% uh, lower blood glucose levels in the first 15 minutes after eating green rice. But this only applies to diabetics. If you're non-diabetic, obviously you won't see the results because your, your blood uh, glucose level can be regularized by your body uh, no matter how much uh, blood sugar you eat, but eventually it will still rise. So we'll talk about the preventive measures later on. So as Coach mentioned earlier, we have two very well connected problems in the Philippines so far, not just in the Philippines but in the whole world. One is obesity. Everyone knows what obesity means. Uh, does it mean that uh, you it means you're obese, not necessarily. Uh, some bodybuilders are big, they have a high BMI content, a uh, high BMI number, but they're not really obese. Their fat percentage is very low. So it gets complicated. And then diabetes naman, is what happens. There are two kinds. Type 1 is genetic. Type 2 is uh, related to uh, the, way, the, way you, uh, the way you eat and the way your lifestyle is, basically. So, obesity definitely is linked to diabetes, it's linked to heart disease. In general, it increases mortality risk. You have a higher chance of dying earlier, basically. I'm not scaring you. <laughs> In general, as a, well, everything boils down to numbers and, and studies. Maybe some studies will have different numbers from the studies conducted by certain individuals. But at the end of the day, there's a general consens consensus introduces life expectancy. It's just that uh, obesity, based on a, a, a trial by Harvard School, School of Public Health and the British Medical Journal, it, they say that it reduces uh, life expectancy by up to 14 years if you're obese. So now they're saying, uh, Coach uh, uh, mentioned this earlier also, it's not just about your fat, overall fat, but how big your waistline is. Because they're saying that, that the fat tissues in your waistline produce certain hormones and then actually uh, increase your, your uh, mortality risk. Okay? So these things, we are studying it, but we're not yet there. We don't understand the, the, the human body for what it really is. So we don't have a full grasp yet. There's so much things that we can learn from the human body so far. That's why people are always learning. So pwedeng um, manyare. Studies last year can be disproven this year. But it's always changing. Uh, there are some people who have contradicting claims. Some say coconut oil, for example, is good for you. Some people are saying coconut oil is bad for you because it's high in saturated fats. So the thing is, we have to raise awareness so that we're updated all the time. Okay. Diabetes is obviously linked to obesity. That there's a higher chance for you to be type 2 diabetic if you're obese. That's already a, a fact. So one cup of excess rice, as found by certain studies can increase uh, by one cup of excess uh, it depends per person uh, depends on your body frame some people it uh, depends definitely on your body weight and your met metabolic rate so you call basal metabolic rate 
So some people actually can um, eat two cups of rice a day. Some can eat uh, three cups of rice a day. Some can eat four. Coach, ilang kinamay mo kanin per day? Limang kutsara lang siya. Ako, two cups lang ako per day. Two cups lang ako ng new grades. One for lunch, one for dinner. I used to eat four. Yung uso yung mga inasal. <laughs> so, the thing is, it's very obvious that, I'm, I'm sure, you just look around you. Everyone here eats rice, right? Uh, excuse me for asking, sir, what's your waistline? Condemned. I'm going to delete the check. Exactly. No one checks your waistline. When was the last time, sir, you got your blood test? <laughs> Annual, maybe. Two months ago. How was it? Okay pa naman. Oh, yun. Basically, okay pa naman. Okay pa naman. Pag, pag may problema na, saka na natin na-address yung solution. Pero pag okay pa naman, okay lang. So that's, that's the mentality that we have as Filipinos. Maybe we can procrastinate regarding work, regarding business. But the longer you procrastinate about your health, the earlier you die. Simple as that. So will you procrastinate when it comes to your health? That's a question you should ask yourself. Ako. 24 years old. Am I worried? Definitely. My mom's diabetic. My dad's been diabetic. Takot na ako. Yung takot nila ngayon, nakuha ko ganito kaaga. Because I don't want to have the same problems as they're having. Okay? So, three cups of excess rice can increase diabetes risk by 45%. Sino yung mahilig mo body rice dito? So, tama naman si Villiard. We actually have to reduce our rice intake and increase vegetable intake. This is too much excess rice, too much of anything can be bad for you. So individuals that eat more rice have a 27% higher risk of diabetes than those who maintain a healthy diet. Healthy diet, let's focus on healthy diet. Does it mean that the uh, healthy diet is a certain set of foods that you have to eat? Not necessarily. Again, what food is available to us depends per country. Look at the Eskimos, for example. Halos wala silang source of carbs. Puro is lang kinakain nila. But their bodies have adapted to it because they've been there for so long. But their life expectancy isn't lower than ours. It's actually longer. So again, it depends. Uh, each person is different. So we have to tackle um, health in that way. We have to look at it in many angles. Coach and I were discussing this a while ago. May CrossFit ka, may ketogenic diet ka, may Cohen diet ka, ang daming daming diet plan dyan. May paleo diet, ang daming, ang daming um, gyms, ang daming fitness uh, instructors which, are, which have their own styles. But at the end of the day, if you don't know the science behind it, you can't pick. You're just listening to what's happening. So you have to understand, everyone has to understand what's happening, and then you pick, you pick your poison. Kumbaga. But the thing is, only 90% of, uh, only 10% probably of the Korean population cares about fitness that much that they want to learn about the science behind it. So that's what we're trying to achieve here. That's our advocacy, we're raising awareness so that in turn, that 90% can slowly learn and adapt to the diet and nutrition. So again, uh, how does rice lead to obesity? Eventually, there's a term we call insulin resistance. Uh, is anyone familiar with that term, insulin resistance? So maybe I won't uh, go deep into it yet. Uh, but most common cases, there are two common factors. One is either genetics, if you're type 1, and number two, type 2, if, if it's your lifestyle. So genetics, you're born. I have a client right now, he's 10 years old. He was born uh, um, type 1 diabetic. He has no choice, he has an insulin pump probably paying around 4,000 pesos monthly for insulin. So right now, he's very happy with grains. He cut his cost down to 2,000 per month. It's a very effective sa kanya, especially for type 1 diabetics. Because it's either you go away with rice, or you change the way you cook rice for type 1 diabetics. For type 2, you're lucky. You can be more versatile. You can actually reverse it. With grains, we already had cases where we were able to reverse type 2 diabetics. Not here in the Philippines, but uh, in Singapore and in Malaysia. Grains is a Malaysian product after all. It's been there for a longer time. They've been in the market only for two years so far. 
uh, here in here in the Philippines, we've only been here for about a year. Okay, so all of our previous customers were just getting the testimonies now. Of course, dieting takes time. Okay, so diet, nutrition, and exercise. These are very important factors. I forgot to add recovery. I'm sorry for that, coach. So my recovery factor for the diet. I didn't know that. So eating high GI foods requires the pancreas to exert more effort to produce insulin. So this can cause insulin resistance later on, especially when you're older. My dad's problem right now is this one. Uh, he wasn't uh, diabetic. He wasn't pre-diabetic until recently. Even he tried going away with. Uh, carbs entirely, uh, your ketogenic diet, but end of the day, it's not sustainable. So we have to uh, look at better options. So let's look at the overweight uh, populations in Southeast Asia. Number one, surprisingly, or not surprisingly, is Malaysia. That's why they invented this rice cooker in the first place, because they have a big problem with obesity. Number two is Thailand. You know why? Sangaling kanin natin. Mostly we have problems with that. Sangaling yung mga frutas natin. We have our own, but if you look at the export um, quantity, it's mostly in Thailand. Thailand, I think, in Southeast Asia, is one of the best in agriculture. Okay. Number three is Singapore. Why? Why do you think our people obese in Singapore? They walk around, their, their mass transportation is very good. Why? They're a very rich country, that's why. So they can afford to eat well. So, if you don't have food for it, you can eat it. So, that's why when people go there, tourists, they see nothing. They just eat. After you eat your lion, you can eat it. That's why you can eat it. And not surprisingly, number four is the Philippines. So, we're actually, for a very poor country, for a very, very poor country. Why are we number four? Pansit Canton. Pansit Canton. That's what I'm saying. You know who's going to do that? Malaysia. I don't know. They're going to die. That's what I'm saying. There's a lot of people. There's a lot of problems. There's a lot of problems. Bro, it's high sodium, high carbohydrates, low in protein. There's a lot of problems. And the thing is, you're only allowed to eat probably one per day maximum. That's already high. What's the problem with the Pinoy usually? Okay. Sa UP ako, pag gusto mong magtipid, apat ang ibig ito, yun ang kakainin mo the whole day. What does it give you? Mostly carbohydrates, if you store it in excess as fat. So if you notice, what's the current build of the average Filipino? Yung mga dating, let's say, hard laborers, carpenters, farmers, ano yung nangyayari sa kanila? Maliit yung muscles, very small frame. Yung buto nila medyo manipis, tapos malaki siya. So, siguro, pag carpentero ka, mga 20 years old, 30 years old, may abs ka pa. After mo maging 40, 50, yung laki na nung siya. Pero, payat yung shoulders. Payat yung chest. Why is that? So, they're only eating mostly carbohydrates. Okay? So, we need proper nutrition, not just carbohydrates. Sometimes, we actually have to reduce carbohydrates. And with, when we're talking about nutrition and diet, it's not always adding. That's the misconception that we're having right now. It's always about adding. Supplements this, supplements that. Sometimes you actually have to remove instead of adding. Grains, what it does is actually remove some of the carbs, not add anything to the rice. Okay. So, Coach um, mentioned earlier a cycle. Um, this cycle, I call it, it's practically almost the same cycle. I just call it to make it easier for you to understand cycle of obesity. So, what happens when you eat more? What happens when you eat more? Obviously, you gain weight. But the the cycle is your sugar, especially when you eat uh, carbs, you eat more carbs, your blood glucose level rises. Once it does, what does the body try to do? Lessen the blood glucose level by producing higher insulin. Once you have higher insulin, what happens? You store the fat instead of burning it. Okay. Kasi pinaprioritize mo yung burning ng carbohydrates kasi mataas yung insulin mo eh. So, that's why probably ketogenic diets work kasi they prioritize burning of burning fat rather than the burning of carbohydrates because of their low insulin levels. So, what happens when you store that fat? It's harder with your high insulin. It prevents you from burning the fat that you have right now. 
So, kung, kung kulang yung exercise natin, you're probably not gonna lose your weight. Then, what happens when you get bigger, when you get more fat? Your basal metabolic rate increases. From, let's say, 2,000 calories, but if you gain 20 pounds, probably you're, at, you're gonna add 300 to 500 additional calories that you have to consume every day. You just lumalaki lang nung lumalaki yung appetite mo. So, it's eventually, um, gonna lead to obesity. So that's, this is not a short-term cycle. It's a long-term cycle. It's gonna take years probably, or months at least, for you to be obese. It's not like, uh, over-eat ako ngayon, mukhang obese ako. Pero pag gawin, gawin mo yun every time, you probably are gonna end up obese. So what happens with grades? It increases satiety, you eat less. Surprisingly, um, how much do you think can one rice cooker eat per meal? Anyone? You think it's good for one person, your rice cooker? Some some of my customers tell me, uh, "Pang solo lang ba?" Looks like it. Grabe yeah. naman yung kinakain yung kain. <laughs> actually, it's not. It's actually for a family of five to six. Mm. If you count the recommended dietary intake, yung volume niya, uh, not weight, yung volume niya ng rice, that's enough for one person per meal. So again, if you eat two cups of rice, does that mean it's okay? Of course not. You're still eating parts. Yeah. So again, we tell our customers, don't abuse it. Eat what you can, not just because you can, you should. <laughs> Next, it decreases glycemic load. This is already proven, we have tests for it, we'll show you later. It decreases glycemic load by up to 40%. That's very, very handy. Talking about uh, eating every day. Prevents overproduction of insulin. Eventually, it will uh, prevent insulin resistance. And of course, it decreases your caloric intake. So all of this doesn't matter if you don't actually reduce the calories if you want to lose weight. But the thing is, grains actually reduces calories per cup by 18 to 20 percent. So what are the problems for low calorie diet? Number one, you have the lack of energy. Number two, your metabolism is lower. Uh, you go into what we call the hibernation mode. So T3 and T4 are hormones that we have in our body. Um you gonna pronounce it, it's a little Tyroxin and tyrannin they're actually tyrannin tyrannin they're actually basically called T T3 T3 and T4, which tells you uh, should I be burning fat or should I be accumulating fat? Uh, basically that's the system. Eventually you'll have heart problems. Uh, these are potential, not necessarily guaranteed. Number five, very important, malnutrition. Pag nakita niyo yung mga street children sa tabi-tabi, ano yung kinakain nila usually? Uh, what's cheap? What's high? Uh, high in energy, mostly carbohydrates. So you can see even if they're thin, they have uh, big bellies. So you, that's a sure sign of malnutrition. Okay. Number six, muscle shrinkage. If you don't eat enough protein, you won't eat mostly carbs. Uh, your muscles will shrink and you'll accumulate more fat. Number seven, insulin resistance and irregularities okay, of insulin. So one thing they say, if you have midnight snacks, it's also bad for you. So I can't, uh, only an nutritionist can tell you that, I can't tell you that. But this uh, thing, number eight, is a guarantee for diabetics. Uh, is anyone here familiar with the term ketoacidosis? So what happens, kind of see coach, he was talking about um, energy systems. Eventually, diba, we're gonna, he asked the question, what happens to fat? Eventually, we're gonna burn it, right? But uh, there's a byproduct, not just CO2, not just water when you're burning. It basically, do yung end goal yeah. But along the way, it's breaking down um, what we call ketones. Breaking down the fat into what we call ketones. So this thing, you actually uh, pee it out. And you can actually test how much ketones you have in your, in your body by urine test. But if you reach around 12 beata, you can never 12 to 13, 14, you're in a state called ketoacidosis. This can be fatal for diabetics. But it's not like the uh, ng rice today, ketoacidosis now bukas. It takes a while. And that's a problem. You don't uh, easily see the symptoms behind it. So you have to ask your doctor and save your time. So with grains, we're not saying, when you buy the product, don't go to your doctor. Consult. We're actually there to tell you, you can use it as a supplement. Uh, you can use it as a tool to support your diet. 
But at the end of the day, you have to get your physician's um, permit. Okay. So this is grades. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll introduce you now to the product. Uh, enough about nutrition, it's probably boring for you already. But I hope you learned something. I, uh, just a little bit from what Coach and I talked about. What does grains do? Is anyone here familiar with grains already? Why is it different from Zojiroshi? Why is it different from Tiger? Why is it um, alim, 3D? Yung pinakamurang rice cover, 500 pesos. Uh, why is it different from there? Actually, when the Japanese invented the modern rice cooker, it wasn't actually the way we used to cook it. Yung sinaunang panahon, iba yung pagluto natin ng bigas. Um, if you ask, um, who's from the province and not from Manila? Here. Anyone? What province are? Where are you from? Marinduque. Marinduque. Uh, Na-observe mo ba before, ma'am, yung pagluto ng ano natin? Ng lolo mo or lola mo? Before. Even though, say, well, probably most of you are familiar with the rice cooker, but uh, you're not familiar with how we cook it back in the provinces. Actually, they use it as a Because they put it in a pot, excess water, the grains are there. But what happens when, uh, before it's cooked, the tubing? The excess water is removed. Because that contains now the slowly digestible starch and the rapidly digestible starch. But if you boil it, you leak both. If you don't boil it, you're only gonna leak mostly the rapidly digestible starch, which is what we call the bad starch. Kaya nila tinatapon yun. So, in all honesty, there's no point for us selling the product if everyone was cooking the same way. But the problem is, with uh, the problem with convenience, who here cooks the same way? When I ask you the question, no one is familiar with it. Exactly, this is exactly the problem with modern society. We're too dependent on appliances. This makes life uh, easier, basically. So the motivation and the inspiration behind the repercook process, uh, that's what grains does, is actually yung pagluto nila ng sinaumang paghod. Which is, we share the same culture practically with Malaysia and Indonesia. Yung pinanggalinga natin pareho rin. So they know our problems more than anyone else. So that's why when they invented this product, it's quite similar uh, with the idea that you can sell it to the Filipinos. Okay. First step is called thermosense. Uh, what it does is sense the perfect temperature for you to leak the amylopectin. Not, uh, not the amylose. The amylose is very, very, very slight to uh, reduction. Ng yan. Mostly amylopectin is what we're trying to get rid of. So, what is amylopectin? Uh, Joy, pakin kuwa lang yung tray, yung catch basin. So, you'll see it's a very complicated machine inside. So after you find a certain temperature, it's not just about boiling, you have to keep the temperature to a constant level, which is defined by our sensors. So the thermosense is a patented technology, no one can just copy it. At the same time, no one can just do it. So if you have next year na 3D, na ganyan, uh, kayo kasi hindi ito, probably. It took them 10 years to get this um, technology perfected, because it's a sensor, that's why it's very expensive. Number three, after you're done cooking, uh, it's not even done cooking, you're just trying to get rid of the starch. Once you're done uh, leaking out the starch, you can already drain this uh, starch-rich water. This is what you can see now. Uh, can I have a glass, please? Yung clear. May clear ba So can everyone see this one? Ayan, ito na so this is actually the starch. So this is actually the starch. Can you see it? Parang buko juice. If you cook rice regularly, this is what you're eating alongside the rice. With a regular rice cooker, it actually also leaks out the starch, but not to the same efficiency. But the problem is, what, what regular rice cookers do is that it cooks the water, it boils off the water, so all the starch that's been leaked into this water stays inside the rice cooker. So what's the point? You still eat it after. Instead of being inside the rice grain, it's actually surrounding the rice now. What does grains do? It actually drains the water. 
So no rice cooker in the world does this. Okay? There's no rice cooker in the world that does this. So it's the only rice cooker in the world that can do this. So pag sinabi ng Zoji Roshi, ah, 27K na yung rice cooker namin, we can do the same thing. Don't believe them. You ask them this question, does it drain the starch away from the rice? Okay. Number four, what happens now when you drain, what's the biggest problem now once you drain this water? They hit out yung bigas. Hidaw yung kanin mo. And it's not going to be desirable. So grains, what, had, uh, what, what they had in mind is to add another step, which is what we call the demoist stage, wherein everything is selected. Uh, every, the quality and texture and taste of your rice will be dependent on the settings that you put, that you input inside the rice cooker. So uh, has anyone here tried cooking with a regular rice cooker? I'm sure everyone knows. How do you control the texture and the, the, the quality of your rice? Water to rice ratio, oh, right? So, water. sir, ilan yung tagal mo naman? Dalawa. Dalawang bigas. Bigas. Oh, Ilang tubig? Uh, hindi tatlo. Dalawa din. It's Dalawa din. One to one. Day. How about you, ma'am? Ilan yung sa'yo? Tatlong tubig. Tatlong tubig to one to one what? That's actually good. If you throw away the water after. If you don't, wala kwenta. So, the thing is, Si Mang, Eva, si Sir, Eva, everyone's going to be different. So, the point of demoist is to standardize the stage. So, on water namin, if you put two cups of, um, two cup or one cup, uh, two cups of, or one cup of rice, you put the same amount of water. No, not one is to one. Four is to one. Four water, one cup of rice. What happens? So, isip ng mga tao, uh, it's going to be too wet. Yeah. Malata. No, it doesn't happen. Because we drain out the water after. And we introduce the second stage of cooking, wherein they will demoisturize the rice now based on your settings. So in the setting state, uh, settings panel, you can see softness level and moisture level. This is very, very unique. Even the advanced Japanese rice cookers cannot do this. Because everyone is practically the same. They introduce different materials. They introduce steam, they introduce pressure, but at the end of the day, the water is still there, the starch is still there. We're the only rice cooker that, that, take, that tackles the, the cooking of rice in a different way. Wherein we put an excess amount of water and we actually leak it and cook it again. Okay. So any questions so far? Okay. So again, we have test results to prove that. So I'm sure you wouldn't believe me if I just told you uh, it produces starch and rice. Of course not. You're not that stupid. No one would easily believe that. So Unipec is a Malaysian lab. It's ISO 17025 accredited, which is accredited by the world. Okay. So even that the Philippine FDA accredited this one already. So what happens? When we cook uh, rice in grains, there's a 65% reduction in amylo pectin. You can see from 24.8 grams per 100 grams, it became 8.8 grams per 100 grams. For amylose, from 37.4 becomes 33.8. That's quite small. But why is it small? It's because we still need the amylose. For diabetics, you still need a little bit of starch, especially the amylose. Or else, wala kayong, parang kinain, parang minum lang kayong tubig, wala kayong kinain. So your blood sugar will still drop. So you need something to stabilize the blood sugar for it. So in terms of caloric decrease, it's around 80 to 20 percent. One thing we found out recently uh, is uh, everyone here familiar with the term arsenic? Arsenic is a heavy metal, so it accumulates in our body. University of Belfast from Ireland actually proved, they got a rice cooker from us, they actually proved it already. Uh, using grains, you reduce arsenic content in rice by 80 percent. We're just finalizing the papers now, but you can see Google University of Belfast, you can see the results right away. So we've done the test, uh, sample test in one person. He's a male diabetic. Um, fasting rate at the start is around 140 uh, before eating rice. So the blue line is what happened when he ate regular rice. You can see it goes up, up up to the 75th minute mark, it goes up to around 350, 340. Napakataas yan, 
then it suddenly goes down to around 270, and it goes back up, up again. So that's very bad if you're diabetic. That to fluctuate your blood sugar mo, it's mataas. Now, the next day, we ask him to eat the same amount of rice, but this time taking his medicine, which is 1,000 milligrams of metformin. After taking that, it went down to around 170. That's the orange line. So considerably, obviously, it has to work. So it's a lot lower now. It's more stable. So the next day, we asked him, hey, maybe you can try grains rice. So he tried grains rice. That's the green line. So it's not as good as medicine, definitely. Because you're just taking out carbs. But you can see how close it is to the way metformin works. Okay? You can see it's more stable. There's less um, peaks. There are less peaks. But again, we took it to the next level. Is grains enough? Of course not. You can use it to supplement your um, diet and your medicine. So the next day, we just told him, just to make sure, only take half of your dose. So the, the yellow line so far is grains, rice, and 500 milligrams of metformin. So this is the best result he's ever had. Good news for him, he already lost 40 pounds. Okay. So if we use the AccuCheck meter, I know it's tested for, uh, it, it, it's supposed to be testing blood, but you can actually test um, rice with it. Because it only tests the specific gravity, which is how dense your blood is, depending on how much um, sugar it's inside the, is inside the blood. But if you put in um, rice mixed with water, you can actually see a 36% reduction in the specific gravity of grains rice as well. So there are many, 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 many ways to test the effectivity of grains. So what are the guaranteed benefits of grains? Number one, huge reduction of amyloid pectin or the bad starch. Slight, very slight reduction of the good starch. It's a preventive measure for diabetes. It's an instant remedy. When I say instant, 15 minutes right after eating grains, you can already see the difference for blood sugar regulation. So it's a tool for weight loss, but this one's going to take around one to two months before you feel uh, your weight uh, adjusting. It could slow the aging process. There's been there have been studies now, but I'm not uh, overclaiming the, pro the, the, the product. There, there have been studies already that uh, it slows down the aging process. I'm, I'm not going to push that. Last is longer lasting rice. Right? Why is that? Uh, is anyone familiar here with sake? Uh, we have our local version of tapuy, uh, which is rice wine. What happens with tapuy? It's actually the starch converted, in, uh, converted into sugar by uh, amylase, what we call it, enzymes that convert the starch into sugar, and is digested by yeast to convert into alcohol and uh, CO2. So, beer, it's the same process. But the thing is, with rice, it's so high in starch that it spoils easily, not actually just because of bacteria, but also because of yeasts. But the thing is, with grains, you're, you're reducing the amount of carbohydrates, you're reducing the amount of food that the yeasts can eat. So what does it mean? It means your rice will last longer. Okay. What does it mean when we say longer lasting rice? When we tested this, when you put when you leave grains rice three days out without putting it in the fridge, it, you can still eat it after. Usually it's just one day it will spoil, two days it will spoil. It all happened on three days. In the fridge, it reached up to uh, three weeks before it started um, liquefying into sugars. Okay. So what are the features? Number one, as I mentioned, you can uh, adjust the settings. There's a moist, uh, moisture level and softness level. So it depends per client how, uh, what the texture of rice they want. You can actually cook with different recipes. If I want to use this setting for California rice, I can do that. If I want to cook basmati rice, I can do that. So it's all different. Okay. So it's also capable capable of cooking other sources of starch, so potatoes, couscous, uh, quinoa, whether any other. As long as it has starch, you can cook it there. But of course, the potato, you need to chop it. If you chop it, it's not starch. 
It's also capable of cooking brown rice. Our advantage versus regular rice cookers is that when you cook brown rice, you usually have to soak it for one hour. With grains, you don't need to soak it. As you observe with our brown rice there, in our sample, you just put 20 for the softest level, for the default setting brown rice, starts cooking right away. Yes, sir. Is that the same with red, uh, red uh, rice? Sorry? Red rice. Red, 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 red rice, yeah. Anything uh, red rice, forbidden rice, black rice, you can just adjust the settings. Because it's all customizable. But we suggest 16 to 20 for the softest level, as opposed to regular rice with 3 to 5. Of course, it's much harder to cook, so you need to, to boost up the settings. But the thing is, it takes the same amount of time to cook, which is around 40 45 minutes. So you save actually one hour of your life every day. So it's different. So, uh... Variety of rice, different sets of... Uh, yes, different settings for different varieties. And, and different uh, percentage of amount of starch. Yes. For example, basmati rice is long grain. It already has a lower GI. So when you cook it with grains, probably the reduction will only be 30%, 35%. But if you're cooking short grain rice, which is very sticky or glutinous rice, the reduction could be about 40 to 45 percent. So it's better that you, you eat, you choose healthier rice um, um, varieties in the first place. But even if you don't, from high GI, the range from high GI will also be low GI at the end of the day. What, whatever rice you put in, inside could be in a certain high GI range, it's going to be in a lower GI range. Well, have you tested it with NFA rice? Is that what everybody's eating? Sorry? Have you tested it with NFA rice? NFA rice, we, 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 it's basically the same, but the problem with NFA rice is that it's broken. So, it's shoot in the colander and it's broken the machine. That's the only problem with NFA rice or with broken rice. But in terms of e effectivity, we know it will work. The problem is the, Fili the Philippine FDA does not know how to test. Only Malaysia and Thailand can test. But we agreed upon with FDA that if they cannot test, as long as we have test results outside and it's ISO 17025 accredited, they will accredit us. But right now we're undergoing our testing with USD as well. Pardon me, you said that. Uh, yes. Pardon me, uh, you said that uh, the uncut different sizes of the grains clogs the. Yes, yes. Why is that? Okay. Um, maybe I can show you how the rice cooker looks first. No? There's a colander inside. There's a colander inside. So anything that goes through the colander will, will jam, will jam the, okay. the magnetic ball, which is what releases the excess starch. Okay. So can you make it, uh, the hole small, Sorry? smaller? Sorry? Can't you make the no? Hose? If we make it super small, smaller than this one, it will not um, leak at its maximum level already. So again, we have to sacrifice one thing, uh, focus on the better quality drinks because we assume people will be choosing better quality drinks. Wait, it will not leak on the holes, but it will leak, it leak uh, if otherwise we, we cook, right? Sorry? Yeah, but the water and the, and the starch has to go through that colander. Oh, okay. After it goes through that colander, it gets flushed into this drain basin. So if it doesn't get flushed and it gets stuck inside the colander, Whatever you cook inside, you will just eat it again. So that's the problem. Okay, thank you so much. For no that. problem. You can ask uh, questions anytime. Yeah. Sorry about that. No problem, no problem. So again, it's also cap uh, capable of cooking different kinds of starch. As Sir, Sir mentioned, uh, what's the problem with smaller um, grains? If you put, for example, uh, anything that's powdery, like flour, it will just go through the colander. There's no point cooking that one. And obviously, there's no point in cooking bread. But, there, uh, but noodles, you can cook. Other sources of grains, beans, you can cook there. Um, as long as, um, for example, big, um, big uh, like potatoes, sweet potatoes, you have to cut them. Big and medium. Pasta. Pasta you can, but it won't be al dente. That's the disadvantage. Again, it's not utilized, it's meant for rice, for rice. It's not necessarily meant for pasta. But for pasta, you can cook it in case you're desperate. But it will not be al dente anymore. But, but Pinoy spaghetti is not even al dente. Yeah. So I guess you can cook it there. So maximum of 2.5 cups of uncooked rice. Okay. 
So 2.5 cups, it sounds small, but it actually doubles 5 to 6 cups per person cold. And you don't need to eat more than that. So uh, warrant, there's an internal memory board. For example, uh, I choose this setting. I don't have to change it again the next time I cook. It maintains that setting. So it's smart that way. So there's one year service and limited warranty. Um, for that, you can just check out the details once you purchase. So thank you very much for listening. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you, Sir Kevin, for introducing us grains, the revolutionary health rice uh, rice cooker. So now we come to the question and answer. So you can ask Mr. Uh, Coach Joseph and Sir Kevin, and they will be willing to answer your questions. Who wants to go first? Okay. Um, okay, Sir Kevin. Sir, the price point. Yes, uh, the rice cooker is 27,000 pesos. Isn't it a bit high? But yeah, but again, let me ask you, do I have competitors who can do the same, who can claim the same? It's expensive because it works. So it's the same thing with insulin. Why is it expensive? Because it works. But again, uh, there's three months installment with your stance and with Appenson, so we'll make it easier. And two years from now, after we reach the, a certain point, we're planning to uh, release a cheaper model, which will be in the 15,000 peso range. That's probably two years from now. Why is that? Why, why does it take so long? Because the technology is very hard to develop. If everyone had money, it would be easy. But the point, the point is, it takes time and investments to improve the technology. So if we come, come up with a substandard technology, it wouldn't work. Same, same thing with your iPhone, right? That's why it's expensive at first, but it gets year of the chassis market, which is the adaptation stage. So right now, it's uh, a bit pricey, we understand, but later on, we will definitely launch a cheaper model and a commercial model, so that people who can't afford the rice cooker at home, they can go to restaurants and they can serve grains rice there for just the same price, and they can use the grains to go. So that's part of our advocacy. But the problem is we need to develop the technology first, which will take some time. So please bear with us. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, follow up on this question. Sir, follow up on this question. Yeah. Sir, follow up on this question. Yeah. You were going to create a cheaper uh, units. Yes. Para kuchan. Kaya para walang po ba ng quality ng mga design? Definitely not. Um, of course, when we made this product, yung stainless steel mo it's definitely expensive. Uh, your colander is Korean, it's definitely expensive. The technology, the sensor, it has a computer inside, which is definitely expensive. If you look at the uh, uh, regular rice cooker, like 3D, on off lang siya, uh, switchboard lang yun. This one has a motherboard inside, it has a computer that computes the time and the memory. So number one, is very expensive. So these things we're planning to sacrifice so that we can come up with a cheaper model for the, for the BCD market. But again, it's gonna take some time because uh, it's a very complicated machine. Hindi siya pwedeng basta-basta ng gawin or else mga it won't be as effective, right? So we don't want to launch something that's imperfect. So we're waiting for the for the right time to do it. Okay. That's your question. Yes, and thank you. Thank you. How much electricity does it consume? Sorry. How much? Electricity? Ah, electricity. Three fifty watts. Very low. Very very low. Uh, your your Zoji Roshi is around one thousand two hundred watts. Yeah, so, uh, but again, uh, our market doesn't really care about uh, consumption of rice cookers. It's a malik lang talaga. But uh, it helps, it definitely helps. And, uh, but again, the, the, the difference is, if you use a 3D rice cooker, for example, it can cook your rice in 25 minutes. Our disadvantage is that it cooks for 40 minutes. So you're 15 minutes longer, but uh, it's a small price to pay for the health benefits, I think, I believe. In terms of spoilage, uh, how long does the rice before? Uh, you're talking about regular rice? Yes. Regular rice, one day, sira na yan usually. But unless you dry it, uh, okay. with, unless you dry it, kung sinangat the next day. Uh, for this one, it can last three days, room temperature. Well, we've tested that already. Room temperature, we've tested that already. Kasi kinatanggol niya yung pagkain ng yeast. In the ref, uh, it can last three weeks. But I don't, I, don't, I don't want to recommend, but again, mali mo yung 
<laughs> yung lugar niyo may may ano pala may ibang bacteria or mold that's not really that's really bad so I don't want to recommend that you do it but uh, usually we we found out three days is okay can you bake puto in that? sorry can you bake puto puto or any other or, ano pa glutinous rice you can actually cook inside it's just a matter of how you do it ako uh, do we have a video ko ng nagluto ako <laughs> We have that video. Maybe you can show them. Actually, Malaysia has been, uh, if you're familiar, they have glutinous rice uh, dishes. Eh. Yung mga, uh, palita, parang palitaw nila eh, the version. Uh, they actually, onde-onde, that's what, what, what they call it. They cook it inside. It also removes the starch. But again, if you uh, eat glutinous rice, it already has a naturally high glycemic index compared to white rice. So avoid it as much as possible. It helps. But I don't want to overpromise. And of course, uh, pag kumain ka ng palitaw, tapos you want it to be healthy, don't add white sugar after. <laughs> Same with your puto bong bong, don't add white sugar after. Kasi it defeats the purpose. Yun yung uh, nagkakamali yung consumers usually, that's why we want to correct it. If you want to, be, if you want to take your diet seriously, don't add, uh, ano naman, white sugar after. Yes sir? Um, what removes the starch is basically the heat, right? The heat and the water at a certain temperature. Yes. No laser, no. No laser, no anything. It's simple. You can do it at home. I'll teach you how to do it at home, but it's going to take you three hours. <laughs> so yeah. the, the question is is it worth your time? For one press of a button, do I rather, would I rather buy the rice cooker or spend three hours every day just to cook my rice in the same manner? So we're selling here convenience at the same time, uh, the effectivity. Because when you cook it, uh, manually, it doesn't guarantee it. They say obviously you will lose some starch, but you can also lose amylose because amylose starts breaking down at 100 degrees. Eh? So the thing is, grains is guaranteed not to touch the amylose as much because it doesn't boil the rice cap. So again, if you have an immersion circulator at home, so if you're not boiling the rice, what do you do with the rice? Steam it? Or... No, no, we pasteurize it. <laughs> We pasteurize the rice at 70 to 90 degrees, fluctuating. So steam pasteurization. Sorry? Steam. No, no, no. Uh, it's low temperature pasteurization. Pasteurization, basically, uh, there's high temperature, there's low temperature. It just matters depending on the time and the heat. So, sa amin, it's low temperature, longer time. Is it the same as when you pasteurize cheese? Yes. There are several types of pasteurization. For example, UHT is ultra high temperature for milk. Uh, 3 seconds, 4 seconds at 200 degrees. Uh, uh, 200 degrees Celsius could be like that, or 180 degrees Celsius. That depends. Um, for us, it's different. It's also pasteurization, but it's low temperature, uh, longer time. Any follow-up questions, sir? Uh, yes, ma'am. Hi. Um, dilemma of a mom or may bahay. How about the cleaning? Ah, okay. Can you bring one rice cooker here, please? Uh, do a slight demo, I guess. Uh, may I ask first if your mates will be cleaning or your person will be cleaning? Okay, it's very easy. So, uh, we'll just get the... Because with, with mates, it could be problematic if you don't teach them properly. Uh, we must admit, you have to teach everyone properly. It's the same way when they use a Zojiroshi or a Hirurong slow juicer. And it's the first time they're seeing it, it's hard to clean. But for this one, it's basically simple. You take out this, this is the palander, which holds the rice, which is a guarantee that no matter what, what type of rice you cook, it's not putong. So whatever you cook inside, you eat it. There's no wastage whatsoever. Next, you take out the stainless steel vat, which has the magnetic pole inside. You can see that, ito yung gaw -gaw eh. You can see it. So it is the actual starch that's being eaten out. You can see some of them sticking there. That's usually the problem. If you don't treat it properly, it will jam. So what do we do? Ever use the scotch bright, the green side? You just put a bit of uh, warm water and soap. Because it's very white, just white, uh, with, with soapy water. And the green side of the scotch bright, not steel wood. Never use steel wood. And I'm going to mention but if you don't clean it, the potential that it might jam the next time, that's that's problematic. So you really have to clean it. 
uh, 2.5 cups. But it doubles to around 5 to 6 cups. 40 minutes, yes. So heat and coil inside, you just um, wipe it. And then we have the drain basin under, which is that one. So now it contains all the starch. Just make sure you throw it away after using it. Because if you don't throw it away and you cook another batch, it will overflow. So that's the only difference in the regular So it's an added step, but we believe it's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. No, if you, put, if you don't clean it before. Because the water comes out in the drain basin after cooking, right? So naturally, you have to remove this water. Throw it away, put it back inside, and cook the next batch. If you don't, it will work. Okay, um, alright. So, grains being sold under stands, select stores of, of, of Abbotson. We have dealers in Cebu, we have dealers in Davao, or you can order directly from our Facebook page. But uh, we have two dealers actually in Davao. One is called uh, Southwoods, and the other one is called Chinese Boutique. But they all sell at the same price. Yes, sir. Are you planning to manufacture a bigger model? Yes. So this is called the Pork 1.9. We're going to have a model called the Pork 10 and 3.8. That's, that, that's going to be for four years, probably. One is a 10 cup model, one is a 50 cup model for commercial use. This one is a 5 cup model. So one is for a larger family, uh, the other one's for commercial use. Right. But the price point is not so big actually, uh, not even double. It's just the case that we're changing. But the computer and the software inside it's practically the same. So what's the point of us increasing the price? Again, we wanted as an advocacy to the Filipino people. We don't want just to make. We don't. We're not here just to make money. It's the same with coaches' principles. We're here to change lives, not just to make money. Okay. What yes, if it gets, uh, let's say, broken? Ah, you can bring it to our service center. Yeah. Sorry? We have one here, Shobul. One here in Shobul Boulevard, one there, and one in Balitawak. How about the warranty? Warranty is one year. One year limited service and parts. Meaning, if uh, for whatever reason, a Sirai rice cooker, we're going to let you keep the colander and the accessories. But the whole unit will replace, except for the colander and the, and the basin. Because these things, uh, they're not actually uh, electronic, so mostly electronic parts are in there at least. Of course, um, if there are cracks after usage, you can't replace that. It's not covered in the warranty, it's uh, part of the consumer's fault. Uh, question lang kay yes. Coach. Coach, now that you, yan, naki, nakita mo na, 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 ano mo na what the rice cooker can do, on your part as a fitness coach, what was what is your insight? Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's actually a good question. But uh, I I always uh, as I was discussing with Kevin a while ago, uh, not not one item is is uh, can be considered a magic bullet, so or a cure all. So my uh, as, as I said a while ago as well, you know we have a saying in the industry, especially in my practice, uh, that. You can't build a house with a hammer, an entire house. So it's never about the tool, it's about the system. So it's basically a, uh, the complementing things that you would be doing and taking along with grains. So grains actually gives you the advantage of, of uh, being able to lower your blood sugar and keeping it stable, and that's an advantage. Uh, if it does any in, in, um, in decreasing caloric intake, that's all well and good. But that is not the end all of your day. You, don't, you still have to exercise. You still have to eat other items that smartly and wisely along with it. So as I would say, uh, it's one tool and that's good to actually have an option of that tool. But it's not an end all. So you've got to be smart when it comes to complementing everything else going with grades. Hope I answered your question. Right? Cut off vegetables. Vegetables. Can you cook vegetables inside? Sir, you can actually cook vegetables inside, especially uh, vegetables that are high in um, carbohydrates. Uh, potatoes, sweet potato, uh, cassava. You can actually cook cassava here. 
But um, again, sometimes you have to adjust the settings. If you put example broccoli here, overcook ang labas yan. So I don't want to overcook them kasi baka masira yung vitamins, especially heat sensitive vitamins. So I suggest if you're cooking uh, broccoli, for example, I'd rather just steam it. Don't even put it here anymore. Uh, but, but for potatoes, definitely you can cook it here. Uh, it's very high in starch. So we want to get rid of the excess starch. But you can also do it uh, manually. You don't even need the rice cooker for that. For potatoes, you can just do it yourself. This is uh, spe specifically designed for rice. So for a consumer, I wouldn't sell this to you if you're not even eating rice, basically. The, the, this product is for rice eaters. I don't want to hard sell it to you. Uh, I'm eating potato, uh, my diet is mostly potatoes, especially Westerners, for example. There's no point. They're, not, they're just not going to use the product. So I don't want to sell it to them. I'd rather focus on those who need the product, which is rice eaters. Those who can't get away from eating rice. Okay. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. <clears throat> Anyone else who has a question or clarifications to Sir Kevin and Coach Joseph? So all of your questions has been answered already? Okay. Yeah. So I now give the stage to... Papa, I still have questions? Okay. So Ms. Abby will announce the winners first for right, our so Instagram. One last thing that uh -huh. so take a takeaway. Again, this is not a panacea. The whole point of this um, le lecture, the lecture is not a cure for everything. It's just here to help you. We are your friends, not your enemies. And it's always been the problem with the consumer. They want to disprove you so much that they don't want to study the science behind it already. What we want to do is, if you want to disprove us, we accept the challenge. But we want you to raise awareness regarding your own life. We want you to learn more about this, rather than just um, being a know-it-all, for example. So again, the take home is, this is not a, a cure for anything, but this will definitely help you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.